so hi everyone and welcome so i hope you are loving the videos of the next all so we are creating a couple of videos on it so the first video that we created was the introduction to the next auth and then we created our next js project with the next auth so we integrated the next auth to the next js and now we have the third video in which we will design the api so in the integration video we use a static user object we used a constant user object but now this time we'll be designing the api for the user as well so we'll be using the real database so we'll be designing the api we'll be designing the register api so that the user can register through the credentials then we need to store the details inside the mongodb database so now we have this step design the api and then now we can move on and now we can learn about the prisma so we'll be using the prisma for this so the prisma is an orm tool which is an object relational mapping tool and it is a database management tool so it works and it connects to the database and it gives us some of the query builders like to insert something inside to database to make a query to update something so it's a crud operation to the database so it's a tool to work with the database for efficient operations so, and it provides a type safe api and query builder for efficient database operations in software development so we'll be using the prisma orm tool and this is the most in demand technology with the next years and we'll also be using the mongodb database which is a no sql database which is known as the not just sql and it is used to store json type documents inside the collections in a database so if you are coming from the sql then it means a document is a record and a collection is a table and the database is always a database so we'll be using the mongodb database for it and now let's just move on and let's just integrate the prisma into our application so here i am into the prisma documentation so prisma.io is the official website for the prisma and it's a next generation node.js and typescript orm so prisma can be used with any node.js application the express application the nuxjs so you can use prisma anywhere and it's a server side framework so it can be integrated with any server side library of the javascript so now we can integrate it with our app directory with our api so we can click on the quick start and there you can see now we want to create and set up the prisma so first if we move on so we have the add to existing project then we can move on so we have the mongodb over there so now what do we need to do the first step so we have the set up the prisma so first we need to install the prisma as a development dependency so let's go back to the visual studio code and let's just move on into the application directory so we can close all of the files because they are not needed then we can move on we can paste this command over there so npm install prisma and it would be installed as a development dependency and after this now the next step would be now we want to initialize the prisma into our application so initializing the prisma is very simple with it so we just need to run this command the npx prisma in it so it will initialize the prisma into our application so we can run a command with the npx prisma in it so what this command will do so it will add the prisma into our application so it will create the folder of the prisma and inside there will be having some of the basic structure of the prisma application so we can hit enter and after that you will see it will create a brand new folder of the prisma and we have the modified environment file over there and we can move on to the prisma so here we have the schema file of the prisma because the mongodb database needs the models and the models are required thing inside the modern development then inside the schema.prisma we have the generator client which is a prisma client and the prisma client and the actual prisma is different so the actual prisma works with the database and the prisma client connects to the actual prisma to insert or do the database operations and now we have the data source which is a db and now we want to provide the db provider so what database are we using so you can use any of these databases it's up to you but we'll be using the mongodb down there and then we need to move on we need to just define the mongodb database url as well so here we have the database url so we need to provide the database url from the environment you can see this is a static string so this is a pre-generated string from the prisma but now we want to use the actual database so you can move on to the mongodb.com and from there you can just sign in and you can just create a brand new mongodb project so that would be very very simple with it and you can just sign in into the mongodb you can use a github you can use a google and if you are using the email provider the credentials then you can provide your credentials over there from the screen you want to move on to the drop down down there then you can just create a brand new project with the mongodb and then you need to provide the name of your project you can have the next auth you can have the integration so you have the next auth integration with that you can click on the next then you can finally click on create project button and after that there would be a couple of options so now you have created just a project 
but now you want to create a database as well so just click on the build a database button then you can move on you can provide options like if you want the m10 cluster then but it's a paid one if you want to choose the m10 then it's up to you if you want to use the serverless and that's the best approach but if you want a free version for learning and exploring the mongodb so you can use this and then you can just hit on create so it will create a cluster for our application so i think they have forgotten me so we can provide the cards over there so they have the cards so i think this also have the card and now let's move on so now you can see now the project would be created the m0 cluster would be starting to create it then we can put the username as well so we can have the nthadani and then you need to store the password somewhere so you can just copy that password you can store somewhere like this and do not use my password over there because i will change the password after completing this video then we can use the password we can click on create user so this user now can connect your application with the database and that's how it's going to work then we can move on then we can finish and close then we can just move on go to databases but the final step that we want to do is we want to move on to the network access so now we want to access the mongodb so as of now my current ip is being stored there so my current ip is this and i can only connect to the mongodb database with only this ip address but if you want to change and if you want to allow the access from anywhere you can always click on edit and then you have the allow access from anywhere you can just click on the confirm and that's how you would confirm with the mongodb now let's move on to the database and you can see they are deploying the changes but let's move on let's just click on the connect then you can connect with the drivers then you can just copy this command over there so you can just copy the full url that i've provided so copy the full url and you have a note as well replace the password with the actual password so we can just copy this url we can click on the copy then we can move on we can paste the database url here and after that you need to replace the password replace that with this password over there so now we have the password and one last thing that you want to configure is you want to add the database name after this slash so we can have the database name we can have the next auth like this so we can have the next auth like that and now let's move on so now our database is being configured now it will connect our application to the database so that's how it will work and now let's move on and let's just define the model for our application so defining the model would be very easy so we just need to provide a model over there so we can have the model we can have the user like this so we have a model of the user then we want to provide the id so the id would be type of the string then we want to convert the id to the mongodb id so the steps are already there so we can have the connector database and then you can move on you can click there so this is the step over there you can see now we want to move on to the introspection and now you can see now we want to set up a database and you can also install the mongodb compass as well so if you want a cms type thing so you can install the mongodb compass so you can directly uh, remove a record insert a record directly from there and then let's move on so here you can see now we have initialized the prisma we have the init as well now you can see now we want to provide the database url so we did that with this keyword.prisma and now we want to declare a model you can see now we have the user model over there so we can just copy so here we have the user model and we are already defining the user model over there so you can see the id that we want to provide here is this you can see now the type of the id that we want to provide here is the id we have the string then we want to provide the unique generator over there which is the id then it is the format for the mongodb by the prisma so we need to copy that over there copy the id and then we can store that here so we have the id you can see the id would be type of the string and it's a required field then we have the at the rate id to mark this field as the id of a document then the default id is being generated by the mongodb so mongodb automatically generates the id over there so we have a default id and then we are mapping the underscore id because the mongodb generates the underscore id so we are mapping the underscore id to this id and then we are finally defining the object id for this object so that's how the type works for this then we can provide the name as well so the name can have the string we can have the email as well the email can have the string we can have the hashed password like that because now we don't want to store the actual password that we receive from the user so first we will encrypt the password we will convert the password to a non-readable string and then only we want to store it in, into the database and that's how the modern applications works because now you don't want to store the actual string that you receive from the user because again if someone working in the database they can see your password and details so the hash password would be a string but it would be an optional field because some users would be logging in by google or the github so some users won't be having the password they will only be having the name email and the id 
and that's it for that so here we have the user model and now what do we want to do is the next step so now we have defined the model we are connecting to the database now we want to sync our application to the mongodb database so we can have the npx we can have the prisma we have the db we can have the push so it will sync our changes to the mongodb database and then you have an option of the windows you can allow an access and it will sync our application to the database you can see now they are adding a collection of the user and your database indexes are now in sync with your prisma schema and everything seems to be working fine and there you can see finally they have also generated a prisma client so now they have the prisma client you can see it is located there so they have the prisma client now so the prisma client is used for the operations with the database so now let's move on and let's just declare our own prisma client so you can use the generated prisma client as well but the preferred option for us we can use our own prisma client and it's up to you so i'm using my own client because i need some optimizations for the client so i'm using my own client so i'm declaring my own we can have the index dot ts and then you can move on there so now you can move on here so from this link you will find my customized prisma client so you can move on so here what i'm doing so i have the prisma client over there then i'm declaring the prisma then you can see now i'm customizing the global prisma client and i'm checking so you can see so you can see if i'm in the production then i'm creating only one single prisma client or i'm using the global dot prisma equals to the new prisma client every time if i am in the development so what you can do so you can just copy that code from there you can just copy and you can paste that over there you can paste this over there and it will generate your own prisma client and at the top of the file because we are using the typescript so this can give you some errors so you can have the ts no check to ignore all of the errors that are generated from there and now we are finally set it up and ready and now we want to create the endpoint for the registration of the user so that we can register a brand new user so for that we can move on to the app directory inside the api inside the auth we can declare a new folder that can be we can have the register and then we can have the register folder then we can define the handler file we can have the route.ts over there and now we want to declare a new route for our application so this would be a post request so we can have the export cons we can have the post over there so that should be equals to an asynchronous function like that so you need to define all HTTP verbs function that can move on to the register. So register, I think, would only be having the post. So we are going to receive the post over there. And then we'll be having the request as well. So we'll be having the request object. And this is the extended version of the Next.js. And now let's move on. And now let's move on. So we can have the try catch block over there because we are working with the databases and something can fail as well. So we can have the try catch and the finally block as well. So inside the try, now what do we want to do? So first we want to get the data from the user. So we want to get the name, email and the password from the user. Then we want to store that inside the database. So we want to connect to the database. We want to store that and then we want to disconnect from the database. So these are the three simple steps. So I'm going to create another file over there inside this, inside the helpers. So that should be equals to, so we can move on. So we can have the API or we can have the server. We can have the helpers like that. So we can have the server helpers ts and from the server helpers so i'm going to export a function which is connect to the database so we can have the export cons we can have the connect to database so we can have the connect to database so this function will connect to the database and this will contain only two or three lines maximum so we can again have the try catch block over there so in the try what we'll be having so we'll be having the await that should be equal to the prisma so you need to import the prisma directly from the prisma folder dot you can have the connect so it will connect your application to the prisma and you need to convert this function as an asynchronous function so now we have this connect to database function which will connect to the prisma then if you get an error then you can just move on you can have the throw new error like that like unable to connect so you have the unable to connect to database and then you can also log that error as well before that so you can log the error that you receive over there so this is the function for connecting to the database now we can move on into the route file we can close others and now first we want to destructure the things from the request so we want to destructure the json data that we sent from the postman or any client to register a new user and the things that we want to destructure can be const we can have something that should be a wait and it should be equals to the request dot json so we have the request dot json so it will convert the incoming request to the json format and all of the fields that you provide here will be updated here. 
and now for the registration you need to provide the name from the front end you need to provide the email you need to provide the password as well so the name email and the password are required for creating up the new user then what you can do so you can again move on so you can have the validation as well if you don't have the name or if you don't have the email or if you don't have the password if you don't have the password then you can just move on so you can just return the response so you can use the next response from that so you can have the next response and you can import the next response as well and the thing that you want to import is the next response so we have the next response to make a customized response to the front end so here we have the next response over there or we can send the json message we can send the message over there we can have the invalid data and we can also send the status as well so inside the second parameter it would be an object so we can send the status that should be 422 which is unprocessable data and now let's move on let's just work on adding a new user inside the database so first we'll be having the connect to database so we have the connect to database function then we can move on so we can have the cons we can have the new user so that should be equals to the prisma dot we can have the user model so it will directly refer to the user model then we can have the create so now we want to create a new user then we can provide the data as well so the data can be same email and same name but the password should be the hashed password so before storing the user into the database now we want to hash the password of the user so for that we'll be using a library from the node.js which is a big crypt so we can have the npm install we can have the big crypt like that so we can have the big crypt just so we have the npm i which is the big rip so it will install in a moment so we'll be using the big rip over there so now let's move on let's import the big rip as well so we can have the import we can have the big rip that should be equal so we can have the big rip like that and i think we are getting one error like could not find the declaration file okay so we can import that as well so we can use this command to install the declaration file so let's move on let's just paste that over here and it will install the declaration and the types for it and now what we can do so before creating a new user before connecting to database then we can move on so then we can just hash the password of the user so we can have the hashed password that should be equal so we can have the big crypt dot we can have the hash and then we want to provide the data so the data should be the password that we are receiving and we want to provide the rounds as well so how many rounds it will contain to encrypt the password so as many rounds as you provide here so the more encrypted format of the string you will get so by default it has the 10 so you can provide the salt round as it 10 and now let's move on so finally you have the name email then you can provide the hash password of the user as well and i think the bcrypt.hash is an asynchronous function so we want to await for it like that and it will give you the string so with this step a new user will be returned to you and then what you can do so you can return the response as well so you can have the return we can have the next response or we can have the json the actual user object so the actual user object that you create so you can rename this to the user so that should be the actual user and then you can also provide the second parameter and inside there you can provide the status that should be 200 or it should be 201 which is created then inside the catch now what you need to do so i think we can move on i think here we have this over there we have the const user that should be equal to the await because the prisma.user.create is an asynchronous function and after that we have the catch error and if we get an error so we can move on we can log that error as well and then we can move on we can return the next response once again we have the next response and this time we'll be having the message that should be we can have the enable or we can have this turbo error and the status should be 500 with that because now we have this server error and now inside the finally now what we want to do so now we want to disconnect our application to the database so after the record is being inserted and after everything works fine then we can disconnect our application to the database and that's it for that so we can have the await we can have the prisma we can have the prisma dot we can have the disconnect and that's it for the request structure and that's it for the registered request so we have very simple request over there we are just destructuring the name email and the password we are having validations we are generating the hashed password connecting to database then we are creating a new user then we are returning the user that's it if we are getting the error we are logging that error and then we are finally sending the response and then we are finally disconnecting our application from the database and let's just test it out so we can have the npm run dev so we can install this so now we can 
so now we can open the application on our local development server then we can use the postman to send the new request for the register so let's move on so i'm going to create another request over there so let's close this and let's close this as well so now that should be a post request so we can have the http so we can have the http we can have the local host we have the 3000 slash we can have the api slash we can have the auth slash we can have the register over the register then we want to provide the body we can provide the body is the raw that should be the json we have the raw json and inside the json we want to write the name we can put the name that should be we can have the james again then we want to provide the email as well we can have the email so we can have the james at the rate we can have gmail.com then we can move on we can provide the password as well so here we have the password and password we can provide one two three four five six so here we have the password so let's try out sending a new request so fingers are crossed so let's see what happens so they are sending a new request so let's see what happens so it is compiled successfully so you can see now a new user has been created so now we can see the id of the user we can see the name email and there we can see the hashed password of the user as well you can see everything seems to be working fine so now the new user is being generated and everything is fine you can see with this step you can see now we have successfully created the register or api for our application and now we have a brand new user inside our application that's it for this video so now we have integrated the prisma and now inside the next video now we want to integrate this user the actual user from the database to the next auth so let's wait for that video and that's it for this